All right, I want to share this thought with you. Okay. Um, let's see if I can find a good starting point here. Let's see. Oh. I didn't realize there were so many mentions, but uh, Hebrews 4, verse 12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the Bible is not just... A translated book from an old Harry Potter book it is the Word of God and of course the King James Bible is the Word of God in the English language you won't find a perfect pure Word of God in the English language other than the King James Bible and Jesus says the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And of course, Jesus is the word of God. And in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. Okay, so Jesus being the word of God and you know, in Matthew 6, it says, uh, uh, give us this day our daily bread. Jesus is that daily bread. And Jesus is the Word of God. Okay. Where am I at here? Let's see. Give us this day our daily bread. There it is. Okay. And Jesus being that daily bread, the Word of God being Jesus make the connections, read the Bible every day, and uh, you'll continue to grow. And it'll help you with everything in life. Let's see, what is that? Uh, and let's see, what's that verse I'm thinking of here? Is this, uh, is that the verse I'm thinking of? Let's see. Oh, forgive me. What is that? Uh, no, 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 no. No, that's not it. Let's see. What? Hold on a second. So, oh, I don't. I don't think I know how to spell the word profitable. Do I? That's probably not even the word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All right, so very important to read the, the Bible, to understand the Bible. It's the greatest science book in the world. There's no book in the world that's even close to it now. To the point that I want to make. I wanted to just sort of set all that up. To make this point that um, the gospel of Jesus Christ is once saved, always saved. Now we read in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Once saved, always saved. Okay, so it's important to understand that that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. All right, so once you are born of the spirit of God, you shall never die. And Jesus, I mean, this point is made all throughout the Bible, right? It's pretty pretty remarkable and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die believest thou this and go back here to uh, Jesus said unto her 
See, Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. All right, so if you are born of the Spirit of God, you will never die. Once saved, always saved is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the good news. Now, of course, in was it Matthew 7, uh, there are people uh, that it's you know, made known that there are people that say, uh, Lord, Lord, you know, they call Jesus the Christ. They say they believe in him, but they don't because they reject once saved, always saved. They don't believe that Jesus did enough to save them. So therefore, they have to do something in order to assist in their saving of their souls. All right. So uh, basically, it's like uh, it's like uh, you know people that follow the law. Uh, oh, am I? I think I went crazy with that. Let's see if I'm even close with this. Uh, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Okay. So, and I, let's see. Uh, and this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise. Of, okay, so that's not, that's not the other one I was looking for. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, not... Not uh, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without us seeing the promise made of none effect. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Okay, that's, that's good enough. So, uh, if you believe that you're saved by the law, you're, you need to keep reading the Bible. That's the, why I brought up that first point. Read the Bible every day so you can learn and grow. Okay, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith, but after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. So, take yourself out of the bondage of the law, all right? So, if you're living your life and worried about sin, you are under bondage of sin. If you believe that if you sin, you're going to lose your salvation, you're in bondage, okay? So, the Son of Man... The Son of God, Jesus Christ, makes us free, free from that bondage. Okay, now keep in mind it's wrong to sin. It's never okay to sin. You should never sin. It's never okay to sin. But you, if you're saved, you surely recognize that you have sinned, you are a sinner, and you need a Savior. And that's where Christ comes in. He is our Savior. So now here in Matthew 7... All right, it says, uh, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? Have we not taught in your name? And have we not cast out devils? And have and in thy name done many wonderful works? Okay, so these people are thinking that what they're doing is making them good enough to save them because they don't believe what Jesus did was enough. To save them. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. All right. It's not about what you do, it's about what was done for you, right? So, one more verse, and then I'm going to share with you uh, my final thought here. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, so if it was about good works, rich people would have an unbelievable, unfair advantage over us poor folk. All right, because they do many wonderful works uh, 
far beyond anything that we're capable of. But it's not about works, it's about faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves, not of yourselves. Right? It is the gift of God. All right, so Jesus has done it all. Okay, when he died, he covered our sins, covered our sins, period. Uh, it's not, I heard somebody say, well, it's just our old sins. I mean, that's the most ridiculous um, thing that anybody could ever say. It's like they put no thought into it all. When Jesus Christ died for your sins, he died for you, all of your sins, past, present, future. All right. So, so here's the problem. People are saying that, well, uh, if you sin, well, you, you're going to hell. That just goes right back to the law, doesn't it? So what did Jesus do? He just cleared your sins in the past, and now you need another Savior because what Jesus did, only that only abolished your past sins. And then you're going to have future sins, so you're going to need another Savior. And that Savior is you. Um, it's, I mean, it's such a ridiculous idea. But these people are unsaved and they don't understand the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right, so the verse I want to share with you, um, I don't know if I can find it here. Let me think about this. Uh, if I can find this verse, Matthew it was it was Matthew twenty five. No, it's Matthew twenty three. I'm sorry. Why did I think it was Matthew twenty five? Oh, I'm thinking of something else. Okay, this is. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay, Matthew twenty three, verse thirteen. Woe unto you, Pharisees! Uh, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Right, he's calling these guys hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men by saying that once saved, always saved is not the gospel, that you have to never sin yourself. That's what they say. You can't sin. If you sin, you're not going to heaven. And... Therefore, they are shutting up the kingdom of heaven against those men. They preach this ridiculousness too. For ye neither go in yourselves, because they don't believe what Jesus did was enough. And they're preaching to other men that what Jesus did was not enough. They're pre and they're, what you'll notice about these hypocrites is that they'll be quick to point out the sins of others. But they're not going to mention to you their own sins. All right. They just want to point the finger at others, right? And they don't point the finger at themselves. And they themselves are sinners. But for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. So they won't tolerate people that preach once saved, always saved. They won't suffer it. They won't have. They, they will resist it, and they will stand up against it. So they don't want anybody getting into heaven. They're not getting in, and they won't suffer anybody that's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, those who want to get in. Because the bottom line is, uh, those of us that are being called, and let's face it, it God is calling everybody to repentance right but there are some people that are really down really low and they need a savior and that savior is jesus christ and they need to, somebody to save them because they realize they can't do it on their own all right and we do have a savior and that is jesus christ and don't listen to these hypocrites read your bible